to it, I knew in terms of photography that I wanted to take as many photos as possible. Whenever I go anywhere, I, I carry my camera around with me all the time if I can. Um, but I didn't think I would become so obsessed. <laughs> I, um, I even took my camera with me every day up the mountain and there were villagers, um, children that would um, help us with our project and they would help us look for pottery or they would carry our, um, our uh, stake, our flags around, which we used to uh, mark off the space that we were looking in. I would take pictures of them whenever possible. They loved the camera. They loved being able to see their photos because I had a digital. So I would take their picture and then show them and they couldn't get enough. Um, there were a few kids, one in particular, Muhammad, he was my favorite. Um, he uh, he uh, saw me with my camera one day and the next day he came to the mountain wearing his favorite leather jacket, which he definitely wore for the occasion and for the camera. So they they loved it and I had a great time. And it was, it was a good thing really, I guess, in a way because I was able to bond with them even though I, I didn't, I couldn't really communicate with them that well because of my lack of Arabic skills. So it was great to be able to have something to, to get close, you know, with them, to them with. And it was, it was a lot of fun. The pace of life is, is, is really slow and just, I guess, what you would picture um, a farm to be like, except it happens to be in Yemen. Um, I was just amazed at how quiet it was. And sometimes we'd be up on the mountain and I would just kind of stand there just thinking, wow, I can hear everything that's going on in the village, you know. Um, cows and chickens and every once in a while just people talking in the background but it was it's an amazing place to, to think and to I don't know it was serene very serene the religion in Yemen is is Muslim for, for the most part and Friday is the big mosque day where um, most people would go to the mosques and it was interesting because uh, they, they, they pray five times a day in, um, in Islam. And um, hearing the call to prayer at 5 a.m. in the morning was always, was always interesting. Uh, sometimes earlier, actually. Um, and it would go on for, for maybe 10 minutes. It's interesting because, you know, everyone at the same time is doing the same thing. And sometimes uh, when I was on top of the mountain, there's little villages all around. You can sort of hear village sounds from different villages. And I would hear one imam, uh, doing the call to prayer in one village and I could kind of hear the other one maybe he was a little late on it and he would be a little bit behind and they would both be doing it at the same time but sort of at different intervals and that was that was really that was kind of cool in terms of the children and uh everything is 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 more difficult there than than here everything the electricity will go off, you know, for a few hours every day. Sometimes the water is short. They live very tough lives. Because of that, the children are just, they have a view of the world that is incredibly mature. They were the sweetest children I've ever met. The sweetest people I've ever met, really. But the children, especially the boys, always, always running around and, and playing. And they do wear these things called jambias, which are daggers um, and all the men in Yemen wear these but even even little boys a lot of them are not real they're just sort of wooden or you know they don't actually the, the knife doesn't come out of the handle it's just sort of for show but they do have little baby real daggers and I guess it's something that is really more prominent in Yemen than a lot of other places but you can't you can't see a Yemeni man without one they they all wear them 
actually, people in Yemen are the most interesting and eccentrically dressed people I've ever met. They they wear um, sort of skirts and they have, uh, these are the men I'm speaking of, and they wear their daggers and they also wear blazers, sort of European Western blazers over t-shirts with their daggers, of course, in full view. Um, and it's incredibly interesting. After coming back, I, uh, I guess I really, I want to use this experience to further my photography. And what we're going to try to do, hopefully, is maybe have a, uh, a photo exhibit of, uh, of uh, the photos that I've taken um, in Yemen. And, and as sort of an educational experience in general, just because I feel like images speak so much more to people than, than so many other things. Um, and I, I think images are so powerful. And I think a lot of people don't, don't know wh where Yemen is or what it is or what it's about. And um, I think it would be a really great way to, um, to sort of interest people in that part of the world. Out of all the things that I learned being there, I had a moment of clarity at one point in that I realized how much more we are alike than we are different in general people. I was with uh, another American student, a PhD student, and two Yemeni archaeologists. And we were all just um, talking and drinking coffee and tea. The American student was translating a little bit for me so that I was able to ask questions in English and he would translate them in Arabic. And the uh, Ahmed and Salah, the two archaeologists, would answer and we would all just sort of have a conversation that way. I just remember thinking at one point during the conversation, these people are thinking the same things as me and they have the same opinions as me and they see the world in so much of the same way. And I would never know this if I wasn't sitting here talking to them. And that was a huge moment um, and a very important moment for me. And I, I, I wish that more people, I hope that more people will have those moments in their lives. Yes, 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 yes,